Today we're going to talk about self-harm. What is it and why do people do it? I'm Angela Howard and my passion is to break the stigma of mental illness among fellow Christians. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get the first updates of new content. So what is self-harm? Self-harm is when you hurt or harm yourself without the intention of killing yourself. It isn't just about cutting. It can be a range of things from cutting yourself deeply, scratching, biting, punching things, throwing your body against something, hitting your head, punching yourself, or intentionally keeping a wound from healing. You can even stick objects into your skin or swallow poisonous substances. Self-harm is usually a secondary issue. We might have depression or anxiety, trauma, eating disorders, or borderline personality disorders, OCD, or even bipolar disorder. We could be experiencing any of these things and then we use self-harm to deal with an experience or a mental illness that is just overwhelming us. When someone is self-harming, they are expressing or just trying to deal with this deep emotional pain. The physical pain seems to just make a lot more sense than the emotional pain. So please don't try to simplify it by saying that it's just an effort to get attention. For some reason, injuring themselves is the only way that seems to help them cope with feelings of sadness, anger, guilt, worthlessness, and even fear. It can kind of be that distraction from overwhelming feelings that seem too much to handle. So why do people self-harm? When people have shared with me over the years about this struggle, they often say that it's a pain that you can control. It's saying, this is what I feel like on the inside and having a tangible injury to point to. Sometimes it's a response to extreme anger. We might feel anger towards someone and then we turn that anger inward because we just don't want to deal with the fallout in a particular relationship. Many times we feel numb and then we want to experience some kind of feeling, even if it is pain. We might also self-harm to get a release of endorphins, and that is, is a type of self-medication. Other times we might use self-harm in disassociating from a traumatic experience like sexual or physical abuse. It's a way to just escape and disappear inside yourself. Self-harm can be hard to understand, so if you or a loved one have ever struggled with this, please do your best not to overreact, but to find out where the true pain is coming from. This is most successfully done through therapy, and we'll talk more about that next week. 1 Peter 5.7 says, Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. Notice that it doesn't say all your worries except self-harm. That's off limits. God cares for you, period. We're gonna be taking the whole month to just address this issue of self-harm, so comment below. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you. And please subscribe to more videos. I'll be sharing some great tips and encouragement for whatever it is that you're facing, whether you're struggling with a mental illness or have a loved one who does.